What up, African World, and welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. And today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Mandinka people. And as always, if you want to support the home team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for my supporters that include ebooks and illustrated videos, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All the basic information you need is neatly compiled for you there. It's a really good resource and introduction to African history for beginners. The link to Patreon and Afrographics is in the description box below. The Mandinka are a major ethnic group in West Africa and are estimated to contain around 11 million people. They live in many West African countries, but they tend to only dominate certain regions. They're the largest ethnic group in Gambia, the dominant ethnic group in the Casamance region of southern Senegal, a major ethnic group in eastern Guinea-Bissau, and the dominant group in Guinea, where they're the largest group in the northeastern part of the country. The Mandinka descend from the larger linguistic family of the Mande peoples. Some scholars suggest that the Mande group that the Mandinka originated from came from an ancient Central Saharan people. The Mandinka are somewhat related to the Soninka and Bambara people and have been competing with them for a very long time. In fact, one can make the argument that the competition between these Mande groups helped in the early development of Upper West African civilization. Some of the most popular oral traditions in West Africa no doubt comes from the Mandinka. The most popular oral tradition from the Mandinka is the legend of Sanjata Kita, the founder of the Mandinka Empire. The story proceeds to tell us how a prophecy was told to a Mandinka king that he should marry a woman and this woman would give him a son. This son became Sanjata Kita. When he was born, he was unfortunately handicapped, but he eventually overcame his condition to defeat Sumunguru Kante at the Battle of Karina. Sanjata Kita and his council formed a constitution called the Korokan Foga. The Korokan Foga is the only West African constitution that we're aware of, which is testament to the grandness of Mandinka history. The Mandinka converted to Islam relatively early in their history, but one interesting comment on the religion of the Mandinka before Islam was made by Herman Bell in an essay. Foremost among the traditional gods is Pharaoh, who bears a remarkable, though probably coincidental, resemblance to the ancient Egyptian god Osiris. Both these gods were associated with the river and fertility. Both were dismembered, and where bits of their bodies were buried, there arose centers devoted to their cult, in one case along the Niger, and in the other along the Nile. So according to Herman Bell, early Mandinka religion seemed to have accommodated the worship of several gods in which the god Pharaoh was the primary. Pharaoh apparently bearing a striking divine resemblance to the Nile Valley god Osiris. This pre-Islamic Mandinka religion is very intriguing to say the least, but ultimately we don't really know the dynamics of it. Some scholars regard the populations in Senegal, the Gambia, and Guinea-Bissau as an ethnic group distinct from the populations in Eastern Guinea and Northwestern Cote d'Ivoire. Nevertheless, the term Mandinka is widely used to refer to both of these groups of people, and there is little doubt that they speak closely related languages and have similar customs and a shared ancestry in the Mali Empire. Like other Mande groups, the Mandinka emphasize patrilineal descent and live in extended family compounds within larger villages. Like most of the peoples of the Western Sudan, their traditional social organization included a system of hereditary castes. These included the freeborn, who were primarily farmers, slaves who worked in a variety of capacities, and a cluster of special occupational groups, including metalworkers, griots, potters, and leather workers, among others. Traditionally, marriage outside of one's caste was forbidden. Each village quarter was dominated by a single patrilineage, an occupational group, which governed its own affairs and its own set of spiritual shrines. The senior man from the most senior lineage was the chief of a particular village and served as an intermediary with the regional Mandinka officials. 
age grades of men who were circumcised and initiated together provided an important source of village unity. Traditionally, gender roles are quite distinct. Women performed the bulk of the agricultural labor, while men dominated long-distance trade, hunting, and warfare. When Turamak and Chorori led the ancestors of the Mandinka westward, they conquered a large area along both shores of the Gambia River and southeastward toward the highlands of Foto Jalan. Now I'm biased because my personal favorite civilization in West Africa is no doubt the Mali Empire built by the Mandinka. The legacy of the Mandinka, in my own personal opinion, is one of the greatest in all of Africa. The reason I say this is because the richest man in human history was a Mandinka king. They were also the first group of Africans to sail the Atlantic Ocean in the 14th century, which is well documented and they helped to lay the foundation for what arguably became Africa's most popular medieval city, Timbuktu. Now I'm aware that other groups greatly contributed to Timbuktu, but we have to be honest, if it weren't for the Mandinka, it wouldn't be nearly as world renowned as it is today. The empire the Mandinka built, known as the Mali Empire, is known as one of the three classical empires of West Africa, greatly influencing the region. After the Mandinka Empire fell, largely due to Songhai ambition, many of the western kingdoms that used to be loyal to Mali started to break away. Small groups of Mandinka, known as Gulawar, married into some of the leading Wolof and several ruling families, and became an important influence in the political development of Wolof and Sarur states. Also, after Mali fell, rogue Mandinka warriors began raiding the coastline of West Africa. This is how many people in the diaspora came to have Mandinka ancestry, largely due to the chaos of slave raiding. The Mandinka, especially along the coast, were a well-known warrior class, and this is why today, when we think of African warriors in general, we usually think of two groups, the Zulu and the Mandinka, also known as a Mandingo warrior. Well, I'm all out guys, if you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can support the home team on Patreon.com. Also, go check out Afrographics.com, a site where you can get illustrative infographics on African history. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.